It's been a little while since we did our Hidden Gem series, having a look to a game that released a while ago that looked absolutely amazing with that lovely Breath of the Wild style aesthetic that potentially could be a hidden gem. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, it's definitely not. And it's not just because of that wonderfully succinct name. Oni, Road to be the Mightiest Oni, comes from Cloud Leopard Entertainment. It has an action-based combat system, a touch of free roaming exploration, and it looks mighty purdy. So why am I saying it's not a hidden gem? Well, let's find out. Like me, you may not be familiar with the Japanese story of Momotaro. It's the story of a boy who was born from a peach. He goes on an adventure to Onigashima to defeat the Oni. Now, in our English translation, an Oni is essentially a demon, but the word can also mean troll, ogre, a monster, an all-round bad spirit. And that's where the story of Oni, quest to shorten your name, gets its narrative. Here you're a monster human called Kuta, which means sky. The island is filled with demons training, and he wants to defeat them all. Now along his way, he meets a small girl, as well as his ghostly companion, Keizamaru, who literally follows him around for his entire adventure. Further exposition is discovered by the player in the form of small crystalline structures that can be picked up. They might reveal a handwritten note or a part to the Oni story, and as you piece these together, you'll get the full picture. There are other characters on this island, as well as a merchant, and a few others replete with a garbled language accompanying their text. There are some lovely story segments, which use some clever real-time storytelling methods, such as these large billboard-like depictions. So far, it all sounds so good. Mark, this is most certainly hidden gem territory, you're wrong, give up your day job. But then we get onto the gameplay and controls. Now you're dropped off on the island and given the freedom to run around, well at least the freedom to run around around about a third of the island's space, as at the beginning you'll be limited by these invisible barriers. As we know, a good gameplay mechanic is always a good old invisible barrier. It really facilitates the fun, but there is a reason here, and you'll first need to activate three different lanterns before the meat of the game gets going, and that is obviously defeating those Oni. These spring up all across the play space, and they take the form of these unnerving, puppet-like phantoms, and when you approach them, you can engage in combat. There are 12 of these so-called missions to finish before you'll have a boss encounter and then move on to the next third of the island, which unlocks. Now, combat itself starts out quite straightforward. You have a one button attack mechanic, but once an enemy is knocked down, their spirit or soul can then be fully defeated by using a different type of attack. And you can chain this together, which sees you dart from one to the next, extinguishing their life force and gaining you a nice combo multiplier. Now these missions or trials take a few different forms, such as escorting someone across the map or just defeating all of the enemies. But the more you finish, the more skills you'll unlock. As well as your basic attacks, you can hold the button down to perform a more powerful Zelda spin, I mean, uh, Oni spin attack. And then there's Kazimaru mode. By using the right stick, you can control your ghost in combination with the R bumper button. Why might you want to do that? Well, certain enemies will require you to do so. You might need to grab onto them to slow them down, or those lesser grunts can simply be extinguished. He has a stamina bar of his own, and can only do this so often, and that same stamina can be used to replenish your health. Throw in the dodge roll, and that's essentially combat in a nutshell. What you can't do is lock on to enemies, which is a real pain. Some of them will circle strafe around the map, and simply clicking in the stick to center the camera doesn't quite cut the mustard. Then there's the oversimplicity of combat in general. While this does change a little when you unlock some new moves, the premise remains similar. Whack an enemy till they keel over, then change the button and whack them until their soul's destroyed, and their designs and move patterns aren't varied enough to create a challenge. It becomes very by the numbers. There's a special move you can perform, but I just found it tedious, which is a real shame because stylistically it works quite well. It's not a complete disaster. You do learn some new special moves like the excellent doppelganger ability, which allows you to clone yourself. And the way in which you learn this is quite interesting as you have to defeat the Oni that possesses that skill. The best way to describe why it all doesn't come together though is it's formulaic to a fault. You defeat the enemies, you're given a time as to how quickly you did so, you leave back out to that main hub island area, and then you move towards the next one and do the same thing. Now in between that, there are a couple of other activities. One of those is collecting mushrooms, which is as boring as it sounds, 
and it acts as the in-game currency. In the shop, you can purchase a couple of different pairs of pants and a few different weapons, but you really don't need any of it. The weapon already does enough damage to kill most things quite quickly. You can use your companion to heal yourself, so the health items aren't necessary. I just wish there was a bit more, because some of those boss fights are actually quite nicely designed. You also unlock a little baby boar that you can ride around on, which almost won me back over. And there are a few chests dotted around to discover, but that's really it. But they also lock some of your progression behind an arbitrary grind gate. What are you grinding for? Well, every now and then you'll see this symbol in the corner of the screen that indicates a hidden spirit, which you can use your ghost to find. Then if you grab onto it, you can carry it back to base. Unfortunately, when you do this, a large Oni will appear and chase after you. If he catches you, then you lose that spirit and you'll be teleported back to this space. You can dodge to try and get away and generally you're successful, but you have to collect four of those before before you'll gain one extra heart and you may need to get two hearts before you can progress onto the next fight. You can see where this is going, it leads to maybe 10 to 12 frustrating back and forth sessions times three at least as you unlock the full island. I would much rather a shorter game that didn't involve that kind of pointless endeavour. Controlling the character is straightforward but I wish they'd included a faster run button. And to finish on a high, there's potential here. This team clearly has talent. This one's just too shallow for me. Story and gameplay combined score 10 out of 20. And that camera is too slow without a lock on. They score 10 out of 20 as well. Visuals are its best aspect. It's quite a beautiful looking game. Although it released with some significant performance issues, it still does suffer from some slight stuttering and an uncapped frame rate, but it's generally okay. That art style sells it to me, but there isn't a great deal of variety, bar the occasional change in color palette, which in fairness does look quite nice. Tech size is generally fine and you can capture video in handheld, which in my opinion they should remove and improve overall performance. Now sound and music is one of my biggest bugbears. Oni Road to be the mightiest Oni has one of the most annoying musical scores I've ever encountered. I'm going to play you the song and then I want you to imagine that this loop, which it is, is about one minute long and it starts afresh Every time you enter the area, every time you finish combat, you hear it over and over and over again. Like we're ready for the ending. It's only the beginning. Now in the different thirds of the island, thank goodness the music changes, but for the first five hours, you'll be listening to this, which was a terrible choice. In fact, the music across the game just doesn't fit with the aesthetic. I know it's very much a personal preference, but there aren't many games where I have to turn the sound off to continue the review. Visuals and performance then score an okay 14 out of 20. Sound effects are fine, but that music just doesn't work for me at all. Music and sound scores 5 out of 20. Oni's going to set you back £24.99 or your regional equivalent and it has a download of 1.4 gigs. There's no doubt and it has a charming style and can tell a good story but as far as game design go, this one falls down. Value scores 8 out of 20. Oni Road to be the Mightiest Oni has failed in its quest and it looks so good. With some serious gameplay tweaks, what's under the hood here could be a really enjoyable experience, but it isn't. If you found it on a 95% discount and played through in 10 minute chunks, you might have a bit of enjoyment. But if I ever hear that song again, this will become Oni, the road to avoid being chucked out the window. It gets a switch up score, of 47%. This is usually the point at which I say you're gonna be picking this one up. Or maybe you already bought it and totally disagree with me. Either way, I hope the review has been of some use. And uh, <laughs> a thanks to the publisher for the review copy. <laughs> for, <laughs> for all things Switch. And a thanks to our Patreons and members all the time. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. <laughs> oh dear. See ya.